preparing to live stream where we now now streaming live on youtube so it says we are it's still loading but da -da -dum, here we go right so are we live i Let's hope see. so maybe we can get some feedback can we get some confirmation that yeah. uh, we are live we are live. Okay, are hi live. everybody. Well, that is fantastic. We are live on another link. So we're <laughs> yeah. with you. Hello, guys. Welcome to the launch event of Astronomy on Tap Vienna. Uh, before I go into the introductions, let me share the correct link because, you know, Zoom. Uh, so fantastic. I have the link here and I will share it with you on our social media so you can uh, follow us. Or if you go to our YouTube page, you can find us streaming live right now. Uh, but let me share it first on Twitter. Um, and I share it with all my WhatsApp yes. contacts. <laughs> yes, and hopefully in the next one we will solve this little annoying issue. <laughs> and my apologies for that. Uh, good. Great. So I shared it on Twitter and Facebook. So hopefully Thank you can you. find us. And uh, to the ones that had the previous link, our sincere apologies, uh, Zoom did not cooperate with us. We followed the instructions, but it chose not to. So as I said, welcome, good evening. And if you're watching us from another time zone, good morning or good night. <laughs> um, welcome to the launch event of Astronomy on Tap, Yena. Uh, my name is Eleni Vardulaiki. I'm a postdoctoral researcher at the uh, Thuringen Landester Warte in Tautenburg. Um, I work as a coordinator for data in intense radio astronomy. I'm a science communicator uh, known as ROG Astrophysics and a TEDx speaker. And if you have been to an Astronomy on Tap Bonn event or watched us live, I was also uh, the founder and manager of Astronomy on Tap Um And what else? I will tell you a few things about Astronomy on Tap that started in New York by professional astronomers in 2013. And uh, it's an outreach event. It's a public outreach event for the general public. The concept is to have a relaxed event to bring, to bring science closer to the general public in a pub where you can have your dinner, your drink and relax and enjoy conversations and games with professional astronomers. Uh, but due to the pandemic, unfortunately, we switched to online platforms. So the whole community has switched. And uh, to make this more entertaining for you, we changed the format a bit. So we, don't, we will not do presentations. We'll have more games and uh, discussions with our guests. So I will be the English moderator for this event and uh, the German moderator will be Fabienne. Hi, um, also ich bin Fabienne. Ich starte jetzt mal kurz auf Deutsch, da das äh, Event heute bilingual sein soll. Also an die ganzen Englischsprachigen, vielleicht könnt ihr heute noch ein bisschen Deutsch lernen. Und ähm, ja, was ich noch sagen wollte, es würde Sinn ergeben, wenn ihr die Veranstaltung hier in Gruppen schaut damit ähm, ihr später beim Quiz in Gruppen äh, teilnehmen könnt, weil die Anzahl an TeilnehmerInnen ist leider, lim leider limitiert. Um, genau, so maybe in English, please uh, watch it in groups, <laughs> uh, because the number of participants is limited. So now we have enough time to choose a perfect group name and um, yeah, to build it up. It's for the quiz, right? Yes, which is a fantastic quiz, and I really like this platform. I fell in love with it. Um, so let me introduce the guests of today. We're honored to have two exceptional guests who also work at the TLS Institute at the Karl Schwarzschild Observatory in Tautenburg. It's very nice if you haven't been, you should visit after the pandemic, unfortunately. Um, so our first guest is Professor Arti Hadzes. Uh, who is the director of TLS, and Dr. Priyanka Satuverdi, 
Uh, she's a postdoctoral fellow at TLS. So hello, Artie and Priyanka. Thank you very much for being hello. with us tonight. And um, let me give you a bit information of who they are. Uh, Professor Hadzis was born in Maryland, USA and grew up in Texas. He has been an astronomer since 1969, which is the year of the moon landing. Um, so after his parents gave him a telescope at Christmas, I suppose he, he fell in love with the universe. Um, professors had, Professor Hadzis studied in California, his bachelor's of physics at Caltech and the PhD in astronomy and astrophysics at the University of California, Santa Cruz. In 1988, he went to the University of Texas in Austin at the McDonald Observatory as a postdoctoral researcher. And uh, he worked with Bill uh, Cochran on searching for exoplanets. So we will hear a lot about exoplanets today. Uh, in 2000, he moved to Tautenburg to become a director and professor of physics and astronomy at FSU. He was a co-investigator at the Corot Space Mission and now spends most of his time studying planets found by space missions, most notably TESS. We'll hear also about that a lot. And uh, our second guest for the English uh, interview is Dr. Priyanka Chaturvedi. Um, she was born in Pune in India, very exotic. She did her PhD at the research, uh, Physical Research Laboratory, which is a unit of the Department of Space in India. She then moved to the Institute of Fundamental Research in Mumbai. And for the past two years, she has been working at TLS as a postdoctoral fellow. She is associated with the Carmenes Consortium and her expertise is searching for exoplanets around red dwarf stars. She is currently leading the Planet Ana Analysis Working Group at the Carmenes Consortium. And she is also very interested in uh, science communication and is a core team member of United Science Forum, a nonprofit organization for science education amongst uh, school children, uh, children in India and students. Right. Fantastic. I'm really looking forward to hearing more about uh, what you have been up to. And we have a lot of things prepared for you. And because we're all saturated by Zoom meetings and presentations, this is not another Zoom call. We will have a lot of games. So we have three games today prepared for you and one quiz um, along with our interviews. We will start with a game. So feel, feel free to play, play along in the chat. Evangelos Nagel is also from the TLS, is in the chat, in the live chat moderating. So say hello, interact with him, ask questions. We will answer your questions. And you can play also our uh, games. Uh, about the quiz, we will share the live link on the um, chat and you will have to put in a code. We will share also the code. And for the final game at the end of this event, you can also play via the platform, we will share again a link and another code and you can play. And at the last game, you drink, okay? We all drink. <laughs> so uh, I will stop talking now. <laughs> I will give the floor to uh, Fabienne who will start us off with the first uh, game. Thank you, Eleni. Um, and by the way, I would be curious um, from where our audience is. So feel free to type in in our chat uh, where you are at the moment. So what's the town uh, where you are at the moment would be interesting. And um, so I share my screen. Whoops, whoops. <laughs> um, can you see my screen? Um, yes. yes. Okay, um, so the first game is Taboo. Um, and this is just an example. So you have to explain the word above. So in this example, cloud, um, but without using these words here. So sky, haze, water, and atmosphere. If you do so, and I will check it, um, you, you lose. <laughs> and you have to um, explain it to your game partner. And what did we say? 60 seconds time. So I will take the time. 60, okay, Let, let's see, 60, 90, 
we can be a bit to learn. Person. So yeah, it's okay. Yeah, we're good. We're good. Okay. Um. So, did you understand the game, Priyanka and Ati? I think so. Yes. <laughs> yeah, actually, okay. I, have, I have just shared the the um, the word with Priyanka privately. Okay. So I doesn't know the word, and I have shared also the forbidden words. Very she good. Has, and I have to say what the word is. You yeah. have to guess the word, yes. And um, so Priyanka, you start. And okay, three, two, one, take the time. Okay, uh, Aki, uh, near this planet, um, gas. Venus. Uh, g gas. G uh, Jupiter. Uh, Earth. Um, nature paper. A nature paper on nearest planet. Venus is a planet. Yeah. So what about Venus? <laughs> uh, gas. Detection. Okay, sulfur, sulfur dioxide. Uh, recent paper, huh? Oh, is that the detection of this, uh, what is it? Phos phosphine? Yes, that's the word. That's the word. Well done. Very good. That's the third one. <laughs> well done. I would have said all the all the forbidden words. I've done this before. Yeah. The good thing I, I need to read, uh, read the internet. Otherwise, I would have never guessed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've done this game. I was invited recently to a festival, and uh, I was a, an invited speaker. And we had games, and I enjoyed it very much. We had taboo, so I thought it was a fantastic idea to break the ice for a live event. So, uh, Arti, I have just shared with you the next set of words. Okay. So the first one is the word you have to describe, and the other four are the words you cannot say. Mm -hmm. Are you ready? Okay, I just have to keep... Uh-huh. So, you count down to when? Yeah, okay, if you're ready, so... Three, two, one, go. Nobel Prize in Physics last year. Four. Exoplanets. 51 Pegasus. Oh, exoplanets was the word? <laughs> wow. That was the word. <laughs> wow. Eight <laughs> seconds. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Very good. Fantastic. Fantastic. Great. Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. Okay, we need to make it harder. What is the next word? <laughs> Okay. This is Priyanka now, right? Excuse me? Sorry, I didn't hear you. Oh, uh, Priyanka has to say. Yeah, yeah, no, I no. haven't received the key yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's coming, it's coming. Right. So this is the first one is the one you have to describe. The other four are the ones you cannot say. Okay. Okay. Three, two, one. Go. Okay. Nobel Prize Physics this year. Uh, black holes. Uh, yes, that's the one. <laughs> Eight seconds again. I think the words are too easy. That's too easy. I should have made it. You should have put a Nobel Prize in the forbidden word. <laughs> yeah, you should have put Nobel Prize in the forbidden word. Okay. So I will, I will ask now my co-moderator if I should do number four or number five. Do number five. Thank I think so that's much. more Let's tricky. Make it a bit more easy. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because I think I think this is too easy. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So this is now shared with Arti. Let's make sure it's only with Arti. Yes. Okay. Uh, so uh, what is the, first the word? One, the first one is the the one wait, you have wait. to describe. The other four. Sorry. Yes. The other wait, four. Wait. You can. I. Uh, I'm a little confused. Since I see the words I cannot say or some of the... Wait, wait, I will say it again. Just give me a second. Uh... It looks like it's adding both of them. <sighs> uh, okay, I know what you mean, I think. Um, what? So Eleni is editing it so that it makes it more clear. 
so the format now is as before. Ah, oh, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> it did not really work. Uh, it's okay. not. Uh, uh, it's not okay. I think I I I know what you're trying to say. Okay. So sorry. Oh, oh, that's tough. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. The third one is uh, the one you have to describe, and the ones after words you cannot say are the ones you cannot say. Okay. Ready? Okay. I take the time. So three, two. One, go. Uh, flat. Beta pictoris. Need a coronagraph. Uh, that's imaging. Direct imaging. Of? It. Uh, it's exoplanet detection technique. No, uh, but you're, you're looking at something that's flat wow, wow that's the it Debris. 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 five seconds did you say the breeze yeah. yes yes I, did oh, I didn't hear you i was still trying to come up with the next clever word and i did whoa <laughs> we should go professional here yes <laughs> <laughs> you guys are experts this is fantastic yeah <laughs> and all the people who don't know astronomy think now what are they talking about <laughs> <laughs> so maybe now you can tell us Two, in two sentences, what is a debris disk, just for our audience? Arti or Priyanka, anyone? Okay, well, it's the uh, remnants of the protoplanetary disk that forms planets after all the planets are formed. It's left over and it's basically the junk left behind. Uh, if you have ever seen the zodiacal light, that is the debris disk of our own solar system. And one of the world's experts on these debris disks is my colleague, uh, Professor Sasha Krivov at the Friedrich Schiller University. That's one of his uh, areas is studying debris disks. Wow, amazing. Dusty disk, that's why dust was not allowed on the- Yes. <laughs> uh how extended this this case usually in a solar system it is pretty i mean several astronomical units and for other systems i mentioned beta pic mm -hmm. and this was the first debris disk discovered around another star back in 1985 but hubble Te space telescope has taken some wonderful images of the this debris disk seen edge on and in beta pick, it extends for 100 astronomical units. I mean, these are pretty extensive. And disks. for the audience who doesn't know what's an astronomical unit, it's the, um, the distance from Earth to the sun. Everyone should know what an astronomical yeah. unit is. <laughs> Learn this in, in grade school. Yes, yes absolutely. <laughs> Okay, thank you, Ati. In case we forgot, you know, <laughs> because we're, we have too many meetings nowadays and we forget things. So now we will, uh, we will leave you, we will mute, me and Priyanka will mute, and we will let you discuss a bit uh, with Ati in German. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> now, now no, your you German is to... good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, well, I'll, I'll make English and, and German sometimes. Yes, and then German. we can save you. We can save you from this German world after your 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, Ati, um, maybe I should mention that you're my supervisor and that I spend a lot of time together with you in your car because you drive me um, to Tartenburg to um, the observatory and um, I really enjoy talking with you. And so I know, I think I already know a few things about you, but now I really switched to German. <laughs> das ist echt schwierig, dann wieder auf Deutsch. Guys, <laughs> for me out. <laughs> ja. <laughs> okay, um, also könntest du mir und uns um, ein bisschen zu dir erzählen? Also, um, wie hat deine Karriere angefangen? Wann hast du dich dazu entschieden, zur Astronomie zu gehen? Und... Warum Deutschland? <laughs> Warum Deutschland? Okay, well, Eleni hat erzählt, dass uh, 
als ich Kind war in die 60er Jahre, kleiner, und ich war immer fasziniert bei dem Apollo Space Programm. Ich habe das ganze Programm gefolgt und eines Jahr, meine Mutter hat mich im Juni gefragt, was möchtest du für Wein als Weihnachtsgeschenk? Und ich habe gedacht, in Juni? Warum fragt meine Mutter in Juni für ein Weihnachtsgeschenk? Und ich habe gedacht, well, ich bin fasziniert mit dem Space Program. Ich möchte ein Teleskop, aber ein gutes Teleskop. Und ich habe gewusst, sie waren sehr teuer. Und wir waren nicht so, you know, meine Eltern war, war, ein, war arm. Und ich habe gedacht, ah, ich kriege nicht dieses Teleskop, es ist zu teuer. Und tatsächlich, und äh, Weihnachtstag, ich kriege dieses Teleskop. Und das war der Anfang meiner Karriere. Und übrigens, das Teleskop ist, liegt noch in meinem Büro in Tautenburg. Jetzt ist es ein Mu Museum Piece. Und so, ja, ich habe gelesen, wie man bekommt ein, uh, wie man wird ein Astronom und ja, man muss in der Uni, man muss ein PhD uh, kriegen und ich habe geguckt, oh, uh, wer kann ein PhD in, Ast in Astronomy kriegen? Oh, Caltech, California Institute of Technology, so ich war bei Caltech und Eleni hat gesagt, mein CV, Caltech, University of California, Austin und jetzt in Deutschland und uh, ich, warum ich bin nach Deutschland gekommen, das ist, uh, well, Sternwarte war ein gutes Institut, aber der echte Grund, warum macht jemand etwas uh, so sort of crazy wie nach Deutschland umziehen? Aus Liebe. Meine <lacht> Frau ist Deutsche. So, ich habe das aus Liebe gemacht. <lacht> so, ich bin nach Deutschland gekommen. In mein, tatsächlich, meine Frau ist aus München, sie ist Deutscher. Und Wo so. hast du sie kennengelernt? Also, in Kalifornien, als also ich mhm. in uh, Graduate School, University of California, Santa Cruz. Okay, das ist sehr schön. <lacht> oh, ja. <yeah>. Oh. <lacht> <lacht> ja, und es hat gehalten. Also, es war eine gute Entscheidung. Um, Vielleicht noch mal ganz kurz zu deinem Teleskop. Steht das wirklich noch in, in deinem Büro? Ich hab's nämlich ja, ja, gesehen. du kannst das vorbeikommen. Okay. Ich kann das zeigen. Das diese, ja, 50 Jahre alte Teleskop funktioniert noch. Ich habe das in die Sternwarte benutzt, das letzte Mal für den Venus Transit. Okay. Ja. Um, und wann hast du dich entschieden, in das Forschungsgebiet der Exoplaneten zu gehen? Weil, also der erste Exoplanet, 51 Pegasi, wurde 1995, was übrigens mein Geburtsjahr ist, <lacht> entdeckt. Ähm, hast du damals äh, dich schon für Exoplaneten interessiert? Oder Nein, es war, es war vorher, weil dieses Gebiet vom Exoplaneten, es gab Hinweis vom Exoplaneten in die späten 90 er You know, Gordon Walker hat die erste Hinweis für die Exoplaneten Uh, um Amasefi, uh, 1988, das war sieben Jahre vor 51 Peg, aber er hat gedacht, das war die drei Perioden vom uh, uh, der, der, der Mutterstern. Aber ich habe nicht für Exoplaneten entschieden. Uh, ich habe nicht Exoplan ausgewählt. Mm -hmm. Exoplaneten hat mich hat sich ausgewählt. Okay. Uh, ich uh, habe promoviert in 1988, you know, schon lange her, mehr als 30 yeah. Jahre. Ja. Und uh, ich suche für eine Stelle, ein Job. Und uh, damals, es gab nicht so viele Stellen für einen uh, Sternspektroskoper wie ich. Ich habe... Mein uh, PhD war um Magnetic Stern uh, Typ A. Nichts zu tun mit Exoplanet. Mm -hmm. Aber ich habe diese Ausschreibung uh, gesehen in die uh, American Astronomical Society Job Register. Es war eine Ausschreibung von Bill Cochran, the University of Texas. Und er sucht jemanden, ein stellar spectroscopist wie ich, das hilft ihn in die Suche nach exosolaren Planeten mit der Radialgeschwindigkeit-Methoden. 
was so nur dein Steckenpferd gesagt. ist, wenn ich das so sagen kann. Also ich würde sagen, du bist ein Experte in ähm, Radial Velocity, Radialgeschwindigkeitsmethode. And so, ich habe gedacht, ich habe nie von Bill Cochran gehört. Und so, uh, und er ist aus, aus in der University of Texas und mein Doktorvater uh, hat promoviert in der University of Texas und ich habe gedacht, okay, ich gehe zu meinem uh, Doktorvater Steve Vogt und frage ihn, yeah, kennst du Bill Cochran? Und so, ich habe zu Steve Vogt gegangen und Kennst du Bill Cochran? Ja, ja, ich kenne Bill Cochran. Diese Ausschreibung. Er hat einen Job, der Suche nach Exoplaneten mit Radialgeschwindigkeitsmessungen. Und meine nächste Frage an Steve, und das ist die Wahrheit. Mhm. Ist er verrückt? <lacht> ich habe gedacht, ich möchte nicht einen Job nehmen von einer verrückten möchte Exoplanet. <lacht> und dann mein, ich, ich schmeiße meine ganze Karriere weg wegen dieser verrückten Bill Cochran. Und Steve hat gesagt, nein, nein, er ist klug. Es ist ein Planet, Planetforscher. Und uh, er sieht, dass die Zukunft für planetäre Forschung ist mit Exoplaneten. So ich bin nach Texas gegangen in 1988. Und so, ich forscht in Exoplaneten für mehr als 30 Jahre. Wow. Also, ich würde sagen, er war nicht verrückt. Nein, <lacht> <lacht> no, er, war, er war ein Visionär. Visionär. Ja, auf jeden Fall. Und vielleicht, also ich weiß, dass du gerade vielleicht auch mit Radiosignalen rumexperimentierst in die Richtung Exoplaneten. Well, nicht, Könnte das vielleicht was für die Zukunft sein im Forschungsgebiet? Uh, ich denke ja. Ich mean, wir haben diese LOFAR uh, Radioteleskop in Tautenburg und es gibt ein Key Science Program, you know, ein Schluss, uh, you know, ein Schwerpunkt. Ja. Und sie möchten die Radiostrahlung vom Exoplaneten entdecken. Die, in unserem Sonnensystem die große uh, Quelle für Radiostrahlung zuerst unserer Sonne und das zweite ist Jupiter, weil die Magne Magnetosphäre von Jupiter uh, erzeugt viele, viele Radiostrahlung. So da, ich denke, das ist die Zukunft, aber wir brauchen ein riesiges Radioteleskop. <lacht> Wie like das Square Kilometer Array, das ist ein riesiges Teleskop. Das ja. jetzt bauen, but, yeah. ja, mal sehen, was die Zukunft bringt. Also es wäre auf jeden Fall wünschenswert, wenn es da neue Ergebnisse gibt. Mm -hmm. Auch Magnet, Magnetfelder von Exoplaneten. Solche Dinge sind einfach noch nicht genug ähm, erforscht, finde ich. <lacht> <lacht> ähm, okay, und was würdest du sagen, ist die wichtigste Eigenschaft für einen Planeten, damit er bewohnbar ist? Oh, das ist eine gute Frage. Aber das Leben entstehen kann. I mean, it's the, ich denke, wir, wir forschen, was, wir wissen gar nichts, vielleicht, was ist alle Bedingungen, das brauchen für uh, das Leben zu entwickeln an, auf einem Planeten. Und, uh, aber ich denke, uh, vielleicht, wir brauchen Wasser, eine Atmosphäre, aber das ist nur ein uh, Bias, weil wir denken, alles Lebensform sind wie uns. Uh, in so viel like andere brauchen kein Sauerstoff oder uh, uh, Atmosphäre oder Wasser. Aber ich denke, was ist wichtig, zwei Dinge. Die erste uh, ist so nicht so extrem Umgehung. Uh, nicht zu so heiß, nicht zu so kalt, nicht so viele gefährliche Strahlung von dem Mutterstern, Röntgen oder UV, uh, weil das ist nicht geeignet für Leben. Und das Zweite ist einfach Stabilität. I mean, die Entwicklung vom Leben auf die Erde dauert Milliarden Jahre. Und wenn der Planet ist so instabil, dass alles uh, ändert sich schnell in Tausenden Jahre, ich denke, das ist nicht so geeignet für Leben. Mhm. Und ähm, was ist mit Gin Tonic? Ich erinnere mich, dass du oh. das gesagt hast. Ah. 
<lacht> dass ein Planet erst habitabel ist, wenn Gin Tonic darauf existieren kann. <lacht> das ist, uh, oh ja, das ist, uh, ich denke, jemand hat eine, eine Press, Press, Pressmitteilung aber über, über habitabel, habitable Planeten. Mhm. Und uh, wenn sie haben Gin Tonic auf diesem Planeten, das ist ein <lacht> überhabitabel Planet. <lacht> So, ja, yeah, we're, we're suchen for Bio-Signatures of Gin Tonic. <lacht> das wäre eine schöne Doktorarbeit für mich. Ähm, ja, Gin Tonic ja. auf Exoplanet. Ja, das ist verrückt. <lacht> <lacht> Ach, ein bisschen Verrücktheit ist ähm, schon in Ordnung. <lacht> okay, ähm, vielleicht noch eine andere Frage. Du wohnst jetzt schon lange in Deutschland. Und mhm. also wenn ich in andere Länder gehe dann merke ich immer, wie verrückt Deutsche manchmal sind, aber wie verrückt auch andere Länder sein können. Was würdest du sagen, ist das Komischste ähm, in Deutschland, was du so erlebst im Vergleich zu Texas oder im Vergleich zu den USA? Ich denke, I mean, uh, the, you know, wohnen in Deutschland ist schön. I mean, in, in, in USA ist es klar, dass Leute sind freundlicher. Ich denke, die Deutschen <lacht> halten ein bisschen zurück. Yeah. Und in die, 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 die Wissenschaft, ich sehe ein, ein größerer Unterschied. Weil ich denke, ich sehe in Deutschland, you know, zum Beispiel zwischen Professoren und Studenten, ist in, es ist eine künstliche Grenze. Es mm -hmm. ist immer Professor, und Studenten und uh, in USA, you know, wir sind mehr Kameraden. Uh, und ich denke, ein gutes Beispiel ist, uh, wenn jemand promoviert in die USA und der Professor, wie nennt man, uh, wie heißt die Professor? Dr. Vater. Mm -hmm. Und ich denke, oh, was ist der Vater? Und du bist der Sohn und Doktor und ich gebe alle diese. In, in USA und in, zum Beispiel auch in England, das ist Advisor, ein Berater. Wir machen das zusammen. Und das mhm. ist, uh, you know, eine, you know, ist nicht so hierarchisch wie in, in Deutschland. Und die andere, ich habe viele Deutsche das gesagt und die meisten sagen, ja, ja, sie, 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 haben, sie haben recht. Was wir haben in den USA ist die Can-Do-Spirit. Wir machen das. Was ich habe gemerkt in Deutschland, deutsche Wissenschaftler, sie verbringen endlos Zeit, sprechen, was können wir machen? Mm -hmm. Was können wir nach, ma, nicht machen? Oh, vielleicht wir versagen. Oh, vielleicht wir yeah. sind falsch. Und sie denken 100 Gründe, warum sie sollen etwas nicht machen. Aber in den USA, sie machen, sagen, oh, wir machen das einfach. Wir brauchen nur einen guten Grund und wir machen das. Und es ist, sie, ich denke, in den USA, sie haben nicht so viel Angst, falsch zu sein oder zu ja. versagen. Okay, ich war falsch. Okay, ich habe versagt. Oh, das ist das Leben. Wir kennen nicht alle, das ist im Universum. Oh, wir machen das weiter. Und so das ist, ich denke, ein kulturelles Unterschied zwischen mhm. Amerika und Deutschland. Ja, würde ich dir zustimmen. Also oh, sie, ja, jeder Deutsche ja. sagt, ja, ja, sie haben recht, ja. ja. Ja, es stimmt wirklich. Ich, ich genieße das auch. Ich musste mich auch erst dran gewöhnen. Ich glaube, Christiane, meine andere Betreuerin, schaut auch gerade zu. Und am Anfang habe ich sie immer gesiezt und ich kam gar nicht davon weg, weil ich das so gewohnt bin, dass der Professor, Professorin über mir steht. Aber ja, so ist man eher mehr auf Augenhöhe. Und als Studentin finde ich das super. Ja. Okay, noch eine letzte Frage an dich, Arti. Ja. Wenn du dich entscheiden müsstest, also stell dir vor, der Weltfrieden hängt davon ab. Der hängt von deiner Entscheidung ab. Würdest du lieber mit Putin auf einen Ausritt gehen, auf einem Pferd, Putin vielleicht oberkörperfrei, oder zu einem Barbecue mit Donald Trump? Oh. 
Ja, ich denke, ich werde, ich werde mit äh, Putin verdreiten. Auf, auf <lacht> verschiedene Gründe. Okay. I mean, die, die erste, ich bin aus Texas. So, mm -hmm. fair zu reiten passt sehr gut mit mir. Und you know, das ist gut. Ich bin Texaner und ich reite mm -hmm. ein Pferd. Yeah. Zweite, ich kenne kein Russisch. So, ich muss nicht gar nicht <laughs> gut sprechen. Ich kann reden mit der de, de Pferd. Good horse, yeah, doing a fine <laughs> job. Mochtest du ein Karotten? Trump wird endlich sprechen über Top. Ah, das wird die total. Und mit der mit de Pferd, ich bin auf Texas, ich kann mit meinem cowboy hüte und cowboy stiefel reiten und ich sehe genau so macho als Putin aus. <laughs> Ex Exaner. Aber, aber one, eine Bedingung, ich muss mein Hemd tragen. Ich habe okay. kein Lust, ein, ein hemmlos Wettbewerb <laughs> mit Putin auf ein Pferd ever das gewinnen. So Cowboy, Cowboy <laughs> okay. Stiefel und ich yeah. rede mit meinem Pferd. Und nicht das, mit ist, das ist auf jeden Fall erlaubt. Okay. <laughs> Okay, danke, Ati. Ähm, vielen, vielen Dank für das Interview. Und okay, wir, hätten, wir hätten jetzt noch kurz Zeit für Fragen. Also ich weiß, hier im Hintergrund ähm, arbeitet Evangelos für uns und ähm, er kontrolliert ein bisschen den Chat und wird mir interessante Fragen weiterleiten. Ähm, und bis das passiert... Ähm, Vielleicht haben Priyanka oder Eleni. Do you have questions to ask? I, I do have a question. Oh, I, of course you I understood, understood it, huh? I understood everything just to say that my German is in a very good uh, state. Um, and uh, especially the last one, I got all of it. It's true. Okay. Uh, but I would like to ask if you didn't, if you were not forced in a way to do exoplanets, what would you do? Um, as a field, what would you follow in uh, astrophysics if it wasn't for Well, I mean, when I got to Tautenberg, you know, my colleague Silvio Closa, I got very fascinated with gamma ray bursts. So if I were not doing exoplanets, I would have either done gamma ray bursts or astro seismology, you know, studying pulsating stars. That also was something that came out of the these uh, space missions. And I don't know, these gravitational waves are pretty uh, interesting. So, I mean, those are the, the hot subjects of late. So maybe I would have drifted into those. It's never too late. Uh, I'm no. A little... <laughs> no. <laughs> no. You can't teach an old dog new tricks, as they say. No, you, you just wear your Texas hat. <laughs> you do it. It's easy. <laughs> It's the American philosophy you were saying. Oh, good idea. I'll do it. Yeah, yeah just yeah. try it. <laughs> you see, I understood. <laughs> okay, so I see there are no questions from our audience. Um, Priyanka, do you have a question or should we go on? We can go on. Okay. Oh, so, I think Priyanka is very excited about the next game. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the, oh, we're doing the things. Oh, okay. <laughs> so the next game is called uh, True or False. Okay, it's very easy. I will just read the sentence. Or let me get my uh, script out. Do we have? Oh, okay. Ah, we have a question. We were we were too uh -huh. fast. We were too fast for the. Okay. Okay. Sorry, so I know that there is a delay. So I will read the ah. question. Yes, we forgot the 20 second delay. Yeah. yeah. So, have you ever worked with artists or designers before, Arti? No, I haven't. But uh, other artists have contacted me about uh, if they could make a painting of a exoplanet. And they would do this and they would send it to me. And I say, oh, that looks pretty good. But no, I have not. Leider, ich habe das nicht gemacht. Okay. Maybe it's time to do it. I mean, uh... yeah. <laughs> um, the question uh, was asked, by the way, from Ulf Kipke. Do you know him? Oh, 
Yeah, he's the uh, uh, new uh, IT person in uh, in Tautenberg. Oh, okay. Hi, and, he lives, and he lives in Weimar. He's probably around the corner. So. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Ulf. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Uh, this is a very interesting question because there are also a lot of projects happening with uh, sonification and we know of projects with sonification, for example, Mercury Transit or Venus Transit. These are very nice um, public outreach projects. So it's not so uncommon that... Uh, well, it would be good to work with these graphic artists whenever we have a press release because it gets a lot more attention if there's pretty pictures that the public can see. Absolutely, no. absolutely. So if any artist would like to contact Arti for the next <laughs> press <for> release. <laughs> okay, I think there are no more questions. I hope there's not again the delay. But um, anyway, I think we can go on. I mean, with... if there's anything, we can answer it later. Anyway, yeah, we exactly. don't have a, we don't, we're very flexible, very relaxed. But now it's your chance to find out if it's true or false. So for true, thumbs up, for yeah. false, thumbs down. And you guys in the audience, in the live chat, you can also vote. You can say type true or false. We will wait a bit because it's a 20 second delay. So we will wait a bit for you. Right. So the first one says, our planet Earth is the only planet in our solar system with an aurora. Is it true or false? The Earth is the only planet with an aurora? Yeah. Is that the question? Yes, this is the question. I think it's... Okay, I shouldn't say it, right? You should, you should, you should, do, you should do yes or yes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, well, okay, yes. We are guests. We should have wait for 20 seconds, should we? Yes, let's see, let's see. Do we have a response? Uh, okay, it's still. I don't like this uh, delay with Zoom. Okay, now you're voting. So I guess we will have some responses. <laughs> Hopefully. Does the audience know? Any guesses? No? Okay, I will reveal it. So it's uh, false. You are correct. It is false. And uh, there are other planets in our solar system that have aurora, Jupiter. What is an aurora? I have to ask for, you know, <laughs> the audience. Maybe there are people who don't know what's I'm sorry, aurora. I'm sorry. Yes, it's true. Uh, the northern lights or the southern lights. So what happens when the solar wind, so uh, this uh, ejecta from the sun, these particles come to the Earth and they interact with the magnetic field of the Earth and uh, they create the northern lights, as we see. So if you go to the northern countries uh, in the north or to the South Pole, you will see the aurora. It's uh, Polarlichter uh, in, uh, in German. Mm -hmm, and it has nice colors, green. It's the most Yeah, it looks so color. beautiful. Uh, and there are different chemical elements uh, that get excited in the... Um, because of interaction of electrons with the magnetic field of our planet, basically. And you have green, you have blue, uh, red, uh, it's quite there, but higher in the atmosphere, and it's very spectacular. Uh, but there are other planets in our solar system that show auroras, uh, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. Right, so we will go uh, to And I see from the chat, um, <laughs> three times it was said it's false. So yeah. our, our audience is, is right. They're, they know their astronomy. Yeah, well done to the audience. Well done, guys. I'm very excited. So the second one is the smallest, uh, sorry, the smallest satellite sent to space has the size of a briefcase. True or false? The smallest satellite. Yeah, that is sent to space. 
okay, maybe we can wait a little bit so that mm -hmm. we don't spoiler. <laughs> I mean, a briefcase is not big, maybe like that. It's not a brief no, that's a phone, like a. Yeah, more, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. More like, a, you know, the case of my laptop, or, ah, okay. you know, like a bit bigger. Mm -hmm. That size, what a business uh, person would carry. Like all of us. <laughs> Yes, because we do business. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. Um, oh, false, 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 false. There was. <laughs> I got a lot of. I got a lot of. Uh, okay. Why is it false, guys? It is true. No, no I, think I believe there are smaller satellites launched. They are smaller. I have to be at the and satellite can be smaller, right, Priyanka? Yeah, because I guess the cube satellites which were launched, they would be smaller than a briefcase. They, Is it they that could, small? It could be this small. Yes. Okay, so when I read the description for cube satellite, this is what we call in science peer review, guys. Okay, <laughs> so I made the statement and now I go get corrected. So when I read size of the cube satellite. So this is exactly what I was referring to. Um, the description is like, the the size of the briefcase. I thought they were smaller, but I don't know. Yeah, so, but this is very exciting. Okay, it's also how you define a briefcase in my mind is what you would <laughs> put your papers in. A very small briefcase. <laughs> but you know, laptops now get smaller and smaller, so. <laughs> So, I think, okay, I, I will get this. A definition of a briefcase. It's, yeah, I will get this as correct for all, and I'm very, very diplomatic, and we continue. Okay. Uh, but I, I will share the link on uh, on YouTube for CubeSats. There you go. The weight, ah, we get uh, um, a very nice info on the chat. The world's smallest and lightest satellite is weigh, weights only 64 grams. Wow. Very nice information. That's Thank nothing. you very much. The, the next question. Uh, the latest probe sent by NASA to an asteroid crashed on its surface. Space probe. So there was a space probe. Uh, the name is Osiris Rex and it was sent to asteroid Bennu. So I'm becoming very specific. Uh, it crashed on its surface, true or false? We have a 50-50 chance of getting it right, right? I'm just guessing. I would say, frankly, I don't know this. I think, I think I may have saw this in the news. So it crashed. Okay, crash means oh. boom. Crash instead of crash boom, like boom, debris, destruction. I think it, I would say yes. Uh-huh, okay, okay. Let's see, false, we say. Uh, we get a false from the audience. I will reveal that it did not crash, it landed briefly. It collected data. Uh, I will share the link to the uh, live feed. And uh, it is very important for understanding uh, our solar system and the earlier solar system. So studying asteroids helps us understand our, how our solar system was created, I guess. But you guys are experts on uh, solar <laughs> exoplanets, so maybe you can say something more about that until I find my next question. Uh, so. Well, it, it, it does show you that we're not cheating and, and, and Googling what you tell us to find the right answer. You know? <laughs> Otherwise, you'd be 100% correct on everything you say. <laughs> I'm very grateful that you're, you're not cheating because, on an, you know, we're all on our laptops. You can easily do it. Very yeah. nice. So the fourth one is scientists using SOFIA telescope found water molecules on the North Pole of the Moon. Is it true or false? Uh, I repeat, scientists using SOFIA telescope found water molecules on the North Pole of the Moon. 
Okay, Priyanka says wrong, Arti says right, correct. Let's see. Um, I, so like this 50 /50. I like this 50-50. Uh, <laughs> okay. This is the first time we disagree. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's also very recent news and we do have a lot of Zoom meetings nowadays, so we cannot follow all the news. So, uh, water molecules were found by Sophia Telescope on the sunlit site at the south south pole not the north pole oh that's yes. a trick question <laughs> <laughs> it's a trick question and it's a very big uh, discovery because they yeah. now we find water also in on the uh, area of the moon that uh, you know the sun hits it so this is very important for future missions on the moon that was a trick question. That was a trick question, yes. I, that, that's on me. <laughs> uh, very nice. Well done, audience. You know it. Yes, you, they found it on the south. Last one. Last one. Okay, I'll go a bit faster. Uh, oh, okay. Right. This is a debate question. It will trigger some discussion. Phosphine was discovered on Venus. True or false? <laughs> What do you mean by on Venus? Uh, sorry, right, in, at, I'm, I'm not British, so I, the use of prepositions is not correct. <laughs> hmm? Excuse me? It was discovered in the clouds of Venus. In the, yes, let's make it, yeah, in the clouds of Venus. True or false? Yes. So, so both of uh, our speakers have room. I'm uh, very curious what the audience um, answers to this question. There is a big debate. Yeah, it's about questions. Very... And I, I want to ask our guests about their opinion. But we already know what they answered. <laughs> uh, right. So huh. maybe, Ati, you can explain your answer. So why do you think phosphine was detected on yeah, Venus? I think it was claimed to have been detected. I mean, there was a, a press release where they detected the signature of phosphine in the atmosphere of Venus. Yeah, uh, by Jane Greaves, if I'm not wrong. I bet the yeah. names, but yeah. <laughs> and yeah, I know no more other than they think they detected it Excuse me, and it is, uh, they think it's a signature of a biosignature because, you know, uh, animals decaying organic matter can produce phosphine. I think yeah. from and what I read in the press release, it's one of the few places where you phosphine is produced. Yeah, so they say there's no other way um, that phosphine can be produced on Venus. Um, so just live, but there are discussions about if the detection is real. Ah. Yeah, I mean, some people are trying to redo the available data, reanalyze the data, but I think that paper is also not published, uh, which refutes the detection. It was just on archive, so I wouldn't really accept that. I mean, whether phosphine detection claims life, that's another issue, but uh, the detection of phosphine seems to me real. Okay. I like this detection, to be honest. I want it to be real. Yeah. If it's not a signature of a biosignature, maybe it hints for new physics that we have not understood yet, we don't know yet. So it's all very exciting. And it's good that people are looking into it and they're trying to verify it. This is how science works to reproduce results. So uh, I'm really excited to see what comes out of it more. Yeah, if they detected phosphine, one of my, if I play the devil's advocate, I would say, we don't know very much about the chemistry in the clouds of Venus. So mm -hmm. how can you be absolutely sure where it's coming from when the chemistry in Venus is probably complicated? 
that is true that is true uh, there's a lot of more for us to know and uh, looking forward to more discoveries let's continue oh i have another message oh there is a okay there's a question in german on the can ah, you take yeah. it out <laughs> Fabian, wie lange dauert es deiner Meinung nach, bis es in der Atmosphäre von Exoplaneten Beweise von außerirdischen Themen nachgewiesen werden kann? Hm, gute Frage. Ähm, also die Forschung ist gerade auf dem Weg, die Atmosphären zu untersuchen, also mit ähm, hochauflösender oh, High Resolution Spectroscopy. Manchmal ist es schwer, die englischen Begriffe ins Deutsche zu übersetzen. Also ich glaube, wir sind auf einer heißen Spur, aber ich persönlich glaube, dass es schwer ist, überhaupt Leben da draußen zu finden. Also die Wahrscheinlichkeit, dass es da noch Leben gibt, auch wenn es unheimlich viele Planeten da draußen gibt, finde ich, ist immer noch ziemlich gering, geringer, als man vielleicht denkt. Und auch die Zeitskalen, also bis sich Leben entwickelt hat und wir das dann beobachten, ja, dazwischen kann viel passieren. Ähm, deswegen, ich würde es gerne finden, aber ich glaube, das dauert noch. Ich kann aber keine Zeitspanne sagen. Sorry. <lacht> okay. Good. Uh, shall we continue with uh, Priyanka now? Um, yet maybe just one thing. Um, Evangelos will now post the link to the quiz that will follow after Priyanka's interview so that you have enough time to um, sign in. And yeah, but let's start with Priyanka. Yes. Well, I hope you enjoyed the games so far. Now we will uh, go in depth again, uh, find out more about Priyanka. Let me find my questions. Right. So, Priyanka, you're from India. I've never been to India, but it sounds like an amazing place. And After the pandemic, you're welcome. <laughs> thank you so much. I really want to. I was invited to a wedding uh, in January. It was impossible. And I, I'm gathered I didn't manage to go. But I wanted to ask, how big is astrophysics in your country? I mean, we know there are some big telescopes there. And tell us a bit about it. So yes, uh, astronomy is growing in India. Uh, and I would say there are around uh, three to four, uh, two to three meter class telescopes in the country. In the Northern part of India, we have two big telescopes, uh, not big as like 10 meter, but yes, a 3.6 and a two meter telescope. And the one which I worked was uh, 1.2 and we're having a two and a half at the same site. Then India is also participating uh, in the 30 meter telescope project, uh, like leaving apart the political and uh, situation of the project. Uh, if and when this happens, uh, this will open up uh, new gates to astronomy, I would say, and uh, India is a partner in that telescope. And uh, this is what uh, is about the optical telescopes. Apart, uh, India has uh, a very big uh, site for radio telescope. And I think you also would have already worked with the GMRT, uh, which happens to be in the same city from where I come from, very close to that place in Pune. And uh, also uh, there is a multi-wavelength uh, satellite, uh, which predominantly works in UV and X-ray, known as AstroSat, uh, where also India uh, is the, main country which has contributed. So yes, astronomy is uh, getting bigger and bigger and hopefully uh, if we have and keep on having more funds, this will grow. So it's an interesting time uh, for Indian astronomy, I would say. Yeah, that sounds uh, very exciting and uh, there is a promising future there. Uh, yeah. was, the, was it always like that? This is, is this what drove you to become an astrophysicist, uh, I mean, the question is, what drove you to become an astrophysicist? Was it influenced from your environment growing up or did it come later after your, you entered the university, for example? 
I would say like uh, <laughs> it's kind of funny because in India you sometimes have these power cuts. So we used to have these complete blackouts sometimes, and the favorite pastime activity was to sit on in the in on your terrace and watch the stars and uh, try to trace out the constellations. So as a kid, I did that, and that fascinated me. And I had an early visit to the planetarium. So I was uh, like probably nine or 10 years old when I first visited the planetarium. And uh, this was a way, this lasted a deep impact. Like I really uh, enjoyed the show. And I tried asking many people, okay, I really like, how can I become an astronomer? So I think uh, I started looking into that and some people probably uh, end that craze that there, but I did not end it up there. I kept on pursuing this and I'm still continuing it. So I'm happy about that. Yeah, it's uh, fantastic also that uh, the opportunities were created. You had the, uh, the will to yes. go after what uh, what you wanted to study and yeah. what you're studying is exoplanets uh, like yeah. astrophysics. how how did you come to choose this field it's a, it's very interesting and now it's a very big thing right exoplanet research Yes, so I think uh, Artie also mentioned this, I would say the same. Uh, for me, when I started my PhD, I did, uh, so in India, generally you have to do a one year coursework and uh, then you get to choose your PhD project. And uh, so we had several people offering PhD projects at that time. And since uh, from where I come from in Pune, radio astronomy was bigger in sense. I had heard several talks about radio astronomy and I wanted to do that. So I approached uh, a project which was into radio astronomy, but somehow that did not work out uh, due to some other constraints. And then uh, we, we had another program, uh, which was to start exoplanets. It was the first uh, exoplanet program in India. So by that time, this was uh, in 2010 and 11. So despite um, where Europe and US, I would say, had progressed much more ahead in the field of exoplanets, it was just starting to get in in India and this was the first spectrograph uh, being built in India so I got really excited about that since the radio astronomy project wasn't getting to work and so I thought okay this sounds really interesting I had read nothing about exoplanets by that time somehow I just knew stellar or galaxies but not really how you detect planets I found it interesting and then the journey began so how do you detect exoplanets okay so there could be various ways to do that and uh, the uh, popular methods could be transit mm, so we heard about uh, tests uh, in uh, in you mentioned uh, when you mentioned about rt so TESS is a satellite uh, where uh, you're trying to look for transits and transit happens when a planet comes in front of the star and blocks some part of the light. So if you're continuously recording this total light, which is coming from the star, you see a dip, you see a reduction in this light. And this is attributed to the planet if this happens periodically. So this is one way of saying that a planet could exist, but this is not really confirmation. You need to have a spectrograph, a high resolution one, when you want to see the shift of the lines. Now, why the shift happens? Because if you're talking about a star and a planet system, then this uh, they both uh, are trying to uh, go around the center of mass. And uh, when the planet goes around a larger orbit, the star also makes a smaller orbit around its center of mass. And this pull by the planet is very, very tiny. We call it a wobble. And you want to measure that wobble. And if I just give you the example, like how much pull Earth creates on Sun is just nine centimeters per second. And with the current precision, we are just able to get close to 10 to 20 centimeters per second. So we are not yet there to detect Earth-like planets around Sun-like stars. And uh, talking about Jupiter, it's a large planet, it would give a wobble of 12 meters per second. So it depends upon how close the planet is situated to the host star and how massive it is. So this kind of technique, it uh, involves immense uh, power of engineering, uh, software and physics and everything. So this is the radial velocity technique. And uh, RT has been one of the pioneers along with others. So I'm very happy that I get to work with him at TLS. 
This is so lovely. <laughs> uh, it's, a, it's an amazing technique. And uh, what you said about our capabilities in detecting this, do you think in the future we will be able uh, to detect Earth-like planets with these techniques? And how far in the future? Well, uh, there are several issues when we talk about detecting Earth-like planets around sun-like stars. Like definitely we need to have the precision brought down super low by making your instrument into pressure and thermal environments and improving your software. But there is another problem and the problem is the star itself because the star is, uh, stars are not always quiet. They also do several things inside themselves because the st star's surface consists of granules. So there would be activity cycles, granulations, and other things happening on the surface of the star. And this itself produces some uh, jitter in the data. And this jitter is very difficult to control or to model out. So if we have to do this and bring our precisions down to few centimeters, we have to accurately model the stars. So if you want to detect lighter planets, you must know the star at its best. So this is currently another forefront field which uh, exoplanet people who want to detect exoplanets are facing one of the biggest challenges. So you have to uh, collaborate with researchers who study stars. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> this is good. <laughs> it's, uh, this is the future of uh, science, interdisciplinary collaboration. We don't do things on our own anymore. Yeah. And I wanted to ask you on that front, how, how important is it, exoplanet uh, research in understanding where we came from, what maybe how the solar system was created, the role of the earth in the solar system in the universe, um, I did not phrase this very well. How important is it to understand our universe or our place in our universe through exoplanet research? Does it play a role? I think it plays a very important role because if uh, we wouldn't have detected uh, the first exoplanet uh, around uh, like orbiting just at such a short orbital period. So last year, the Nobel Prize uh, discovery, uh, the, uh, the 51 Pegasi 1 system, wherein the Jupiter just orbits at uh, 4.2 orbital day period. Now this is so close. Now had we just known only about a solar system, we would have never imagined that planets can orbit like such large large planets can orbit so close to their host stars. This was unimaginable before. So this opened another window of uh, like discoveries. And then in few years, or I would say in a couple of uh, decades, we have like thousands of exoplanets being detected. And several of these uh, are orbiting so close to their host stars. There are rocky planets, there are Neptune-like planets, there are so this created another category where Jupiter like planets are orbiting close to the host stars and we started calling them hot Jupiters. And uh, this is really interesting. So uh, definitely if you try to understand uh, different kinds of solar systems present in the universe, in the galaxy, uh, you would uh, try to place answers to how the solar system would be formed. It's important to know and study a diversity of planets around a diversity, different kinds of stars. So I think it is an important, uh, it plays an important role. Uh, so what would you say is your favorite discovery related to exoplanets? And uh, what is your favorite discovery in astrophysics? Well, okay. Uh, I would say that uh, the um, exoplanets, um, Yes, I think I was uh, very much happy with the planet announcement uh, around the Proxima Centauri, the Proxima Centauri B discovery, uh, because it was very much Earth-like around the M type star. But uh, the biggest impact that exoplanet field has seen, what I feel personally is uh, by the Kepler mission. The Kepler mission was there for a few years and it did transit studies for many planets. What Kepler taught us was about that there are as many planets as there are stars or possibly more planets than stars. And there are so many uh, rocky uh, planets present out there. And this was, I feel, one of the greatest contributions to the exoplanet field that Kepler has given. So that's what I think personally. Fantastic. Um, 
It's all very exciting. I really like exoplanets and exoplanet uh, research, and I'm looking forward to finding more things that we have not discovered yet. Uh, what would you say to, okay, I will ask you this at the end. Uh, I will ask a more relaxed question now. Very, very relaxed. So we, we are not from Germany. You are from India where things are a bit more spicy, let's say. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, more interesting in the flavor, in the palate. So my question is from scale uh, from zero to 10, how flat is the German food? <laughs> <laughs> now I would see you asking this question to the wrong person. Why? Because I'm a vegetarian and 80% of the German food is meat based. So I really cannot answer because I have tasted only a few things. And what I have tasted is mostly sweet stuff, the, the German bread and the cakes. And I definitely like it. I would give like nine or 10 on 10. But when it comes to vegan or vegetarian food, which sometimes I have to eat when I'm traveling, then it can be a mix. Uh, could be five or six on 10. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I, I will stop this interview now. We'll wait for questions. And if we don't have questions, I will ask you the last one. So we <laughs> give a bit of time to our audience to respond. Thank you very much. It's very interesting to hear about uh, astronomers also from uh, other countries and other continents, not just from Europe, because we are used to working more with people uh, in our institutes. I mean, in Greece, People are from Greece, usually you have also from other countries, but the majority will be from Greece, for example. So when you have a person from another country that can uh, introduce you to new ideas, new techniques, this is very important for research and also to understand how research is done in other uh, countries. So let's see if we have any questions. Uh, right, we have a small delay. so. I have a question. Ah, um, yes. <laughs> so now you're focusing on exoplanets, um, but you, could you imagine to do research on another topic that's completely different or are you interested in something else? I mean, at some point of time, uh, I also feel that there are some uh, important issues uh, like in environmental research. And uh, after, like, after I completed my PhD, I sometimes uh, feel that, yeah, it's important to find alternate energy options uh, which could be sustainable and uh, the way we could um, make uh, environment more friendly and these are the topics which I feel interested in, but I have no expertise. So maybe if I had to choose my PhD topic today, I could also think about this. Like I still am excited about astrophysics, but this also is a very interesting topic. And I think uh, it's important to do research on that. Yeah, I totally agree with you. So I'm, I'm applying now for PhD positions and I considered also a topic that's about um, yeah, climate change and atmospheric yeah. pollution because it's 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 related. I mean, I do almost the same stuff right now, just on exoplanets. Why not on our planet? Because yeah. it's um, more important that we save our planet now um, and that we are not looking for far away worlds that we probably won't reach. We just have this one planet. Yeah. So we have um, we have a question. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for the question, uh, Ulf. You're very interactive <laughs> today. Do you think Modi will make it with a need space program to send people in, to space? In <laughs> <laughs> okay, at the moment, uh, the there is a plan for manned mission to moon. Uh, so uh, maybe uh, this could happen in the near future and uh, whether Modi would send, or I would say technology would make it happen, I would like to put it this way. Uh, and uh, yeah, so this is what I, I, I feel because this is on the plan. So in the near future, it would happen. Yeah. 
Okay, and one last one, and then we will move uh, to the quiz. Uh, very quickly, how rewarding is to do research in astrophysics and would you um, motivate the young generation to follow this career path? Okay, interesting question. Uh, I think uh, what a person wants to do really depends on himself or herself, because uh, if you're really fascinated or passionate about research, uh, one must do. Uh, the difference between doing a normal job and research can be both re rewarding and frustrating simultaneously. Uh, I mean, uh, rewarding in the sense because when I do something, I really feel accomplished for myself. I don't have to really depend upon somebody else applauding for me. It could happen in a private firm maybe because it depends. And here you feel the sense of accomplishment because you feel that it's your job, you own your job. But the other thing could also be, it could also bring sometimes pressure because of the deadlines or something. And you might on days take your work to your bed, like you're tensed about it still. So it is a mixed bag. And if there are young students, I would say, yeah, definitely, if you like doing uh, a subject, if you're interested in anything, be it chemistry, physics, or anything, uh, then you must go for it if you have the passion for it. I, I would agree for that. If you love it, just do it. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, with that, thank you very much again, Priyanka. Thank you, Aline. I will, I will give the mic to Fabienne who will do the quiz and guys, we can also play. So yes, I the link on the chat so you, so you can play. Yeah, so maybe I start sharing my screen and I know from the background, everybody wants to start it and is confused. So will it start now or not? <laughs> the thing is we um, have a delay. So when I say now we started, me might have already started it. So um, let's see. I share my screen. Oops, oops, oops. Now everybody can see my WhatsApp. <laughs> um, so I can't remove the um, bar over here, but people at home, get ready. I already saw many people that I know. Uh, Matthias, Whiskey Tears, nice name. Anvi, <laughs> I don't know, Top Till. Uncool Kids, and I think there are twice here. There's also Uncool Kids of Physics. These are my friends. That's our um, group name for my whole studies. <laughs> and um, Kato Maltese, Team Braveheart. It sounds British. Um, Eleni, but it's not fair. Eleni, I mean, you're muted, Eleni. You're muted. Ah, Zoom. Uh, no, no, I. I signed up, I'm not playing. I ah, just okay. tried to make sure I could. Okay. Yeah, but I'm not playing. So I don't know why I'm still here. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Oliver, Alex, Johannes, Thorsten, and ta Tactical Noob, and Massimiliano. So um, let's get started. Um, Priyanka and Archie, do you want to join? Okay. What is it about? It's about astronomy. Um, you can try. We share the link in the in the Zoom chat. Okay, I click. I clicked on this. Oh, so. Oh, can, yeah, I see all the people. Uncool kids. <laughs> Uncool kid. <laughs> okay. You're in. I think yes. Ah, yeah, Priyanka Ati. So let's start. Oh, it doesn't remove. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So three, two, one. If we were to approach a small black hole, we would. Ah, we can see um, the answers here. Ah, yeah, here are the answers. You would be stretched like a spaghetti, travel through a wormhole, fly right through it, or travel back in time. Seven seconds left. Seven 
Okay, time's up. So most people are correct. And um, you get more points if you're faster than the others. Oh, I see. Uh, yeah. By the way, we don't have prices because we just started. You can uh, give us money if you want donation. <laughs> <laughs> yes, guys donate we are more than happy for donations and if you want to send us merchandise you can uh, contact us at uh, aotyena at gmail.com uh, and uh, you can sponsor us and next time at the next quiz you can send uh, the winner a prize via mail yeah <laughs> so let's move on get ready next slide the Nobel Prize in Physics in 2020 went to astrophysics research related to oh, people are very fast exoplanets cosmic microwave background gravitational waves or black holes it's 2020 not 2019 <laughs> nine seconds left I think we just said it in the, um, in the super yeah. and that's very easy, you know. Yeah, super easy. So it's about black holes. Whiskey tears, not bad. <laughs> okay, so get ready. Next slide. <laughs> The solar orbiter is a spacecraft in the orbit around the sun, set to crash on the sun, en route to the, our near, nearest neighbor, star Proxima Centauri, or en route Sirius A. Sirius A is, by the way, the brightest uh, star <laughs> in the sky, I mean, besides our sun. Okay, time is up. Whiskey cheers. Oh no, Alex. Good job. So it's a spacecraft in orbit around the sun. So most of you were right. Okay, let's go on. The first probe to leave the solar system and still in contact is. Pioneer 10, Pioneer 11, Voyager 1, or Voyager 5? I think that could be a question in Wer wird Millionaire with Günther Jau <laughs> in German television. Who has to take the telephone joker? <laughs> Who will you call? So most people say Voyager 1. Okay, Uncle Kids are nice. Yeah, nice. Most of you got it right. Okay, ready? <laughs> uh, next slide. Sophia is an infrared telescope which is located in Chile, in Hawaii, in the the Canary Islands or inside a plane? I think I have a guess. I think we have 14 astronomers and three, <laughs> three people <laughs> who don't Not study fair. physics. Not fair. We should Not make it guess. harder. Next time it's, it becomes harder, guys. Yeah. Yep. These are very easy questions. Yeah. So it's inside the plane. <laughs> Most of you are right. It's the starter uh, package. Next time. Matthias, Matthias you are now on um, uh, place two. So good. Ooh, wow. Next slide. USA's mission to send again human, humans on the moon in 2024 is called Artemis. 
Orion Habitat or Athena? Eight seconds. And it was difficult. Ooh. Okay, Massimiliano. Not bad. Um, so it's Artemis. Is it uh, pronounced correctly? In Greek, it's Artemis. Uh, Artemis. It's, the Greek, it's the Greek goddess of uh, hunting. Oh, nice. I like it. <laughs> okay, okay, next question. I'm not mistaken. The first picture of a supermassive black hole by the Event Horizon Telescope was released in 2017, 2018, 2019, or 2020. That is super difficult. easy again, super easy. I was but very. Time goes so fast, so yeah. I mean. I was very generous this time with the with the questions. Next time it's going to be more difficult. Like in the New York Times. <laughs> this is the donut picture we all saw in the news, the orange donut. Yeah. Okay, it's, but it was 2019. <laughs> of M87. Uh, yeah. So, I don't know how many questions. Thank you. Next one. Last one. What happens to space debris? There are there is a super vacuum staubsauger in space sent by NASA to clean debris. It leaves the solar system after 10 to 20 years. It orbits towards the sun and gets burned, or is in orbit around the Earth and passes hazards to space stations. I can't read it. Um, Satellites and. Yeah. and but most of you chose the last question. And telescopes. Ah, it was telescopes. the last one, yes. Unfortunately, it's a big problem that even very small pieces can damage even the International Space Station. It's yes. very dangerous. OK. Maybe that's... I, I think know. there's one more. One more question. Yeah. Or two more. Two and more. Jupiter and Saturn, it rains. So some po people who follow me on Instagram know the answer. <laughs> Gold, <laughs> silver, quartz, or diamonds? They all, they all sound fantastic. We should just go there. Yeah. Be nice. <laughs> <laughs> but it would also hurt if it, it would it will hurt in diamonds or quartz on the, on the earth. A just a little bit. <laughs> yeah. So... <laughs> I like it's like a ladder. <laughs> oh, it's the diamonds. Board. So it rains diamonds on like, Jupiter and Saturn. Very nice. Uh, the leaderboard. Well yeah. done, Alex. <laughs> so, oh. It is the last one. Last one. Okay. Which planet would float in a water ocean? Pluto, Saturn, Venus, and Jupiter. Which one is it? I mean, I give you a hint. Something floats in water if its density is lower than the density of water. Yeah, that was a difficult one. Yeah, it's difficult. But a nice one, I think. Mm -hmm. Very good. Um, oh. So it's um, Saturn. Team Braveheart. Good. <laughs> okay, but I think that is it now. Yeah. So first place, Alex. Congratulations. <laughs> Team Braveheart, second. Also okay. very good. And Evangelos. Oh. No, no, that doesn't count. He knows uh, the answers. So no, Evangelos, that's not good. Yes, is the third place actually. Congratulations. Congratulations, guys. And uh, give us donations next time, we'll send prizes. 
<laughs> and if you have been following astronomy on tap bon for the past two years we have been doing this uh, sending also during the virtual events we've been sending prizes after the end of the event so it's just a matter of funding like everything in astronomy <laughs> fantastic okay so i will show now another link did you enjoy that priyanka entirely yes, yes. <laughs> Did you know the, the answers? To, to the quiz? Yes. Not all of them. Not yeah. all of them. Not all of them. Not all of them. Uh, I have to say I had to Google quite a few. So this brings me to the next one. Okay, I will also say it within us. You can also play, but you don't have to because we can, we we can, can just, just get the glass of drink. Of, um, of alcoholic drink or non-alcoholic, I'm not crossing anyone. And this is the last game and the most embarrassing for me who made the questions. Uh, yeah. Let me find the questions. <laughs> <laughs> will, will you share the quiz again or um, do you want to do it in this? It in our chat, but I've already done it. Um, I sent it to Evangelos and I think mm -hmm. I, I already sent it, oh, yeah. Ah, um, yes, no, I mean, will you share your screen? Ah, of course. Yeah, okay, so I don't have to read the, um, I can read through your screen. Right, okay. so this last game is called, everyone has played this on a night with their friends. Okay, it's a never have I ever. <laughs> and when we have done it, we drink. When we have not done it, we don't drink. So what you will see is... Uh, Never have I ever done that. It says yes or no. If it's yes, you drink. If it's no, you don't drink. You can answer and we see who has done most of the things. Uh, I don't think there is a leaderboard on this, is it? Is, there? is it like um, a leaderboard? What do yeah. you mean? Like I know we can't see who answered, so it's anonymous. It's anonymous. This one yeah. is anonymous, so feel free. Yeah, and, and feel free to drink at home. So. No, we all, we all drink. Okay, so here, see? here's my drink. With the astronomy on top, bone glass, my friends gave me before I left bone. Cheers, guys. Cheers. So let's start. <laughs> I would still wait. Evangelos. <laughs> Evangelos right. is very motivated uh, <laughs> today. I love it. <laughs> Evangelos is in the live chat, as we said. Yeah. Thank you very much for the support. Um, I see new people here. Oh, great. So also non-physicists, as, as my roommate, Kat, thank you for joining. Or another friend of mine, uh, Malu. <laughs> Hello um, to so all. So nice that you tuned in. Um, maybe you know now what I'm working on all the time. Maybe a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> and, and also the, the nice people that I'm working with, like Ilani, Priyanka and Ati. Right. I would still wait maybe for yeah, yeah, let's wait 30 seconds. I mean, yeah. we're good in time. It's um, just 8.30, so it's not too long. The right night now. is young, Fabien. The <laughs> night is young. I mean, it's Tuesday, but who cares? <laughs> it's home office. <laughs> it, it's Tuesday during a pandemic with uh, non-stop Zoom meetings. I don't know what time it is all day. <laughs> Yeah, I've been um, for four hours today in uh, online meetings in a row from 12 to 4. Yes, yeah. I, I understand. I'm following an online workshop, which is fantastic. But this is the, the problem that astronomers are facing now. We are on the screen all day. This is why we made games for you tonight. So let's play Never Have I Ever. This is your okay. chance. And this is my chance to get embarrassed. embarrassed. So, okay, so let's start. Let's start. <laughs> Never, <laughs> Never have, have I ever. So, Saleh? You no. can read it, yeah. Yeah, right. Where is it? Never have I ever, oh, gone from the conference dinner straight to the first lectures in the next morning, the next morning while being, well, while still being drunk. <laughs> right, so cheers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Am I the only one that has done that? <laughs> <laughs> Three other people. Like, Four other on, people. Support no, me. Not drunk. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> So 10 people people didn't, but four people and you and Annie did. <laughs> okay, guys, next time we can, we are allowed to go to a conference. You come with me and we do this program, <laughs> okay? Right. <laughs> okay, next slide. Next one, yes. Uh, sorry, yeah. Never have I ever, oh, Googled how to do simple mathematical <laughs> equations. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers to astronomers. <laughs> It happened to me today. Yeah. <laughs> yesterday, I don't know. A random day. So most people did. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank God. Yeah. <laughs> But three people didn't. Um, that's interesting. That's interesting. They obviously are. Geniuses. Or maybe they never Googled a mathematical equation. <laughs> <laughs> Could also be It the can case. also happen, yes. Yeah. <laughs> we also have books, we don't have to Google things. So if you answer yes, does that mean you have not done this? Or if you answer no, does that mean... Ah, okay. Okay, we have, we, I have made this definition in the beginning because we, confu we confused you, it's obvious. Yes means you've done it. Okay, okay. Yes. Yeah. So yes, you drink, you've done it. No, you have not done it. You can still drink if you want. <laughs> <laughs> to you, I mean, I'm not gonna moderate your drinking. Um, so <laughs> next one. Okay, next slide. Oh, never have I ever took on too many projects despite having too little time. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> I think this uh, says a lot about overachievers, all of us, almost. Yeah. Yeah. And your collaborator shouldn't be seeing this. <laughs> this is public. <laughs> Agree. <laughs> I have time. I have time. <laughs> yeah. So most people. Thank you. Too many projects. Thank yeah. you. This this tells there's a lot of uh, um, about how we approach work. <laughs> yes. Yeah, we just uh, get excited about projects and working with people, and I think this is what it is. Science is exciting, and we just want to do more of it. Okay. Right. Next one. Oh, never have I, never have I ever got bored in a Zoom meeting. <laughs> yes. Tears, Priyanka. Tears, <laughs> tears, tears. That was quick for me. <laughs> okay, this person who answered no, no please review no your Zoom meeting, I think. <laughs> and, and tell us your secret. <laughs> okay, yeah, uh, most people. Abroad, and most meeting. people are like us. Thank you. Yeah. Um, next one. Let's see. Never have I ever not looked at the archive for months in a row. So okay, cheers. I cheers. also I also yeah. had a baby, so you know, excuse. <laughs> But uh, let's say to our audience who is not familiar with the archive, the archive is where we uh, upload our publications. It's open access, so everyone can read our publications before they go to the journals. And uh, the, most journals don't have open access or it's very expensive to pay for open access. Uh, so we upload them to the archive. And every day we have new papers we can read. So usually an astronomer would go to the archive every day and read the papers of the day. Yeah. So there's one person in my Scottish working group like Thorsten. Thank you very much that you are posting every morning <laughs> papers in our group because I wouldn't do it. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah, it's, it's very nice. Okay, so most people are looking 
um, to the archive. I'm glad I'm not the only person that I have looked at the archive in a long time. All right. Okay, next slide. Um, hmm. Is that the mean one? Which one is that? I ah, no, no. That is yours. <laughs> Never have I ever borrowed a book from the library. I did not return it. Okay. I really, I haven't done it, but I know people who are um, having books for years in their offices and don't return it. And okay. that's mean, because when I look for the books and I want to have them, they are not there. I, I have to admit that I once borrowed a book from my supervisor at the university, and then I moved out of the city to another country, and I never re returned it. And publicly, publicly now, I'm very deeply sorry. I don't even know where the book is, somewhere at my house. This is very embarrassing. <laughs> I hope she is not watching our uh, stream right now. <laughs> You're watching a brief. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next slide. Um... Right. Oh my goodness, this That's is a debate. A, a ne <laughs> Never have I ever applied the polynomial of 12th degree to fit my data. I don't know. I mean, the background to it is that the phosphine detection on Venus was uh, fitted with an with a polynomial of 12 degree. And I will cite Evangelos here. You can um, fit your grandma with the polynomial <laughs> polynomial of a uh, 12 degree. But um, yeah, <laughs> I haven't said that the phosphine detection is not right. I, I thought it's just funny. So most people um, didn't apply. But none tried. It's good. I mean, I might have also tried in the past. <laughs> Remember, I drank anyway. Uh, right. Yeah. Okay. So that's it. I, think that's it. I hope you enjoyed it. it was so, not, that was not too embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> so, Uncle Kids of Physics. Um, yeah. Um, the most time. Yes. So, well done, uh, Uncle Kids of Physics. I think you. Uh, very good. Yes. Well so done. Well sharing. Done. Here we are back again. Thanks for playing with us. I hope you enjoyed this game. This is one of my favorite games because it's easy and entertaining, whereas Taboo for me is the most difficult game. So if you want to torture me on the next one, you should uh, make me do Taboo. <laughs> I'm very bad. So. Uh, this brings us to the end of our event. Uh, it was our pleasure having us with you, Arti and Priyanka. Thank you very much for joining. Thank you very Thank much you. for uh, playing along and I hope you had an entertaining evening. Thank you very much to Fabien for the German part and for preparing all this quiz and- uh, Thank you, I mean, we did it together, so. Yes, it was, it was fantastic, we had a great time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you to Evangelos, who is on the live chat, uh, interacting and for playing. Thank you to you at home for listening, participating. If you liked it, uh, join us next month. So we will have this regular, regularly. Sorry, the beer kicked in. Um, so we will have this every month, once a month, on the second Tuesday of the month, uh, virtually at the moment, until the pandemic is over and we can go to a pub uh, in Vienna, where you can join us there and entertain, you know, yourselves with dinner and drinks. Uh, so the next one is on the 8th. Is it the 8th of December? Yeah, can you see my screen share? Yes, yes, of course. So this is the second one, uh, and we will announce our guest uh, scientists very soon. If you want to get news from us, you can subscribe to our YouTube um, channel, Astronomy on Tap Vienna, and Facebook, Astronomy on Tap Vienna, Instagram, AOT Vienna, Twitter, AOT Vienna. I think we might have a TikTok account, but I have to double check. <laughs> We, we, we can have a TikTok account. I mean, why not? That's too modern for me. Too I'm modern. Still stuck yeah. on Facebook, so old am I. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we can. To we had for Bonn, so uh, we can totally do one. 
And uh, as we said, if you would like to sponsor us, we're, you're more than welcome. We welcome donations and merchandise and uh, contact us at aotyena at gmail.com. Also, if you want to be interviewed um, or even give a presentation, if you wish, uh, it's open. So, um, anything more you would like to say, Katyn? No, I think that's it. Um... That's it, great. Thank you very much. Uh, have a good night and see you in one month.